fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again! Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! The people living in the small town of Sandy Rock and the settlers in the vicinity of the town were terrorized for some time by an outlaw gang that the law was unable to find. For over two months, the crooks had raided nearby small settlements, rustled cattle from the surrounding ranches, held up stagecoaches, and periodically made forays into the town itself to commit robbery. The crooks were known as the bearded outlaws because each of them wore a heavy black beard. And though they never were known to wear masks, none of them was ever recognized around the town. The gang was a constant topic of conversation wherever people gathered. By Jiminy, that gang of bearded fellas pulled another stage hold up a couple of days ago over near Salem. What's more, they got clean away like they always did. They sure have the law buffaloed. Uh, the law can't find them. Sheriff, sure, sure, funny worries. That's right. Funny how that gang seems to know just what's going on all the time. Must have a mighty clever leader, that's all I got to say. Right. One night after the gang of bearded outlaws had blown up the safe in the Sandy Rock Bank, Sheriff Logan formed a posse which met in front of the sheriff's office and sat in their saddles listening as the sheriff gave them instructions. Men, as you all know, that gang of bearded crooks struck here once more, blasting the safe at the bank and getting clean away with all that was in it. I ask you all to meet here again as a posse to help me try to trail that gang. Oh, go on, Sheriff. We've taken a posse out every time that gang committed a crime. Up to now, it's just a waste of time. I know that. I know all that. You're not telling me anything new, Deputy. But just because we failed in the past, there's no reason why we should give up now. What do you say, man? Are you ready to ride? Yeah. All right, then. Let's get going. Get up there. Come on. Sheriff Logan and the posse, looking tired and worn, reigned to a halt in the courtyard of a mission. The Padre, a close friend of the Lone Ranger, stood at the open door. Welcome, my friend. Good morning, Padre. We stopped by to ask for water. The men and I have been riding all night searching for a gang of outlaws. Of course, yeah. Sheriff. There's a dipper there at the well. You'll find the water clear and cool. Help yourself. Thanks a lot, Padre. All right, boys, go ahead and help yourselves. Yeah. Perhaps you and your men would like to rest a while, Sheriff. I have plenty of coffee inside. That's mighty kind of you, Padre. 
But I have to get back to Sandy Rock. We followed that gang. And as long as the moon was up bright, we managed to keep on their trail. But after that, we lost them. From the looks of things, they circled back towards the vicinity of Sandy Rock. Did you notice several bearded horsemen riding past here since last night? No, amigo. Oh, that's too bad. But I'll get a line on them sooner or later. We're ready to go now, Chief. Yeah, we're sure thankful for that water. The well here is for all who care to use it, my friend. Thanks, Padre. I reckon I'll get a drink now. Then we'll head back to town. Hey, look. A mask armor and Indian coming here. Bold as you please. Cover them in quick. Wait. They are friends. Good morning, Padre. How? Welcome, amigos. It's good to see you. The sheriff and his men don't trust us, I see. Well, why should we? Reach, both of you. You don't need those guns, Sheriff. We saw you here as we approached. We could have had the drop on you if we were outlaws. Maybe so, but... Sheriff we're... Logan, you have my word these men are not outlaws. They are my friends and yours. Padre, we respect you and all that, and I realize you don't question anyone who stops here for water. Food. Now, have you what? never heard of a masked man who rides a white stallion and helps the law, Sheriff? What? Surely you've heard of the Lone Ranger. Uh, Lone Ranger? You mean this hombre? See, si. and the Indian is his companion and counter. Well, dog gone now. I know why you said they're friends. Well, put up your guns, man. I'm sure proud to meet you, Mister. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. Tonto and I stopped by for a short visit with the padre. But what brings you and your men here? We're trailing a gang of outlaws. Lost the trail, though. I see. Mighty mean gang too. They've been operating around Sandy Rock for about two months. Raiding nearby small settlements, robbing stagecoaches and so on. The crooks must have a clever leader to avoid capture so long. Ah. Funny thing about that gang, mister, they all wear black beards. Heavy black beards. They seem to look alike. Well, that's unusual. Perhaps the beards are fake ones, used only as disguises. That's the way I figured it, too, but folks who've seen them say the beards look real enough. A person who is clever at makeup could manage to fix the beard so they'd look real, Sheriff. Well, one way or another, they have a stump. Yeah. The crooks seem to know just when to strike. If a stage carries a gold shipment, they know it. And when my men and I happen to be away from town, they move in and pull a job. I'd say someone around town finds out what's going on. Yeah, but we can't go around pulling beards to see if they're fake. Lots of men wear beards, as you know. Well, perhaps Todd and I could help. I was hoping you'd say that, amigo. Hey, we'd be glad to have any help you could give. Sure. All right. We'll spend a short time here, then we'll head for Sandy Rock and try to get a line on that gang. If and when we do, we'll get in touch with you. Fine. Folks are beginning to get worried about those bearded crooks. Next thing you know, the settlers will be moving away. We need settlers here in the West, so crooks like those men must be stopped. Todd and I'll stay in your territory, Sheriff, until that gang is caught, I promise you. Hey, golly, I feel better already. Well, we'll be getting along back to town now. Adios. Well, adios. Get leather, man. Get up there. Early that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto camped in the hills outside of Sandy Rock. The Lone Ranger removed his mask and carefully disguised his features until he had a weather-beaten appearance with a scar on one cheek. Then changing into an ordinary cowpoke outfit he carried in his saddlebags, he and Tonto set out for town. Meantime, in a farmhouse not far from town, two clean-shaven men sat talking as a woman poured coffee for them. Sadie went into town this morning. She says the whole town's still yapping about the robbery last night. That's right, Steve. You know, I have a hard time keeping a straight face when somebody says something to me about it. <laughs> ah, you can always put on a good act, Sadie. <laughs> I wasn't the bearded lady in a carnival for nothing, Flicker. It was that fake beard of mine and the fact that I knew how to fix it to look real that gave Steve the idea of using beards for the gang instead of masks. Well, you know, being a new member of the gang, I wondered about that. But isn't it risky living here close to town like this? No, we can live right here and go into town whenever we like without anyone being the wiser. <laughs> In fact, folks think Steve Jackson and his sister Sadie are right respectable farmers. Done well enough so to be able to hire five good farmhands. Like you, Flicker, and the others. I bought my carnival beards in St. Louis. When Steve got the idea of having them for the gang, I wrote to the costumer there and got a few more. All he had were black ones, but they do all right. <laughs> 
seems you've got the lawmen in the territory going local. Yeah, we sure have, Flicker. <laughs> I suppose some of the boys even joined with the posse sometimes when they went hunting the gang, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie left Blackie in town this morning having coffee with a posse that just got back from trying to trail us. <laughs> <laughs> Reckon I better go and have the others come in from the barn. The little work they do just for appearances is about killing them. <laughs> Come on in for coffee, fellas. Yeah, all right. Hi, boys. Where's Blackie? Well, he hasn't come back to town yet. Sit down, boys. Blackie yeah. should have been back long ago. He'll soon get here, don't worry. Oh, hey, here he comes now. I wonder what kept him so long. Well, we'll soon find out. Yeah, looks like I got here just in time. Coffee smells good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I found out something important in town, Steve. Yeah, what? There was a tall stranger at the cafe asking questions about the game. Well, lots of hombres have been asking about us, Blackie. Yeah, but there was something different about the stranger. He was dressed like an ordinary cowpoke, but carried fancy guns that no cowpoke could afford. Maybe he's a gunslinging road agent. Yeah, that's possible. I noticed he wasn't drinking and was sort of looking everybody over, careful like, out of the corner of his eye. Maybe he's got the idea he could join the gang, Steve. We don't need anybody else. Shut up, Blackie. It's up to me to say whether we take on anyone else or not. Yeah, the reason I mentioned that stranger was because I thought maybe he was a lawman, Steve. I thought you ought to know about him. Well, later I'll go into town and look him up. What's he look like? Yeah, he's tall, well-built, small scar on one cheek. Well, I'll find him. What's more, I'll find out why he's so snoopy. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll head for town right now. Later, when Steve Jackson entered the cafe, the Lone Ranger was still sitting at one of the tables having coffee. Tonto was at the back of the cafe, and no one knew that the two men were friends. Steve walked in and looked around. Then the outlaw leader approached the Lone Ranger's table. Howdy, stranger. Mind if I join you? Glad to have you. Sit down. Oh, thanks. You must be new around here. That's right. What brings you to Sandy Rock? Looking for work, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> you sure don't waste words, mister. Oh, by the way, I'm Steve Jackson. You might call me Joe Smith if you have a mind to, Steve. All right, Joe. Reckon it's none of my business, but uh, those are mighty fancy guns you have. It isn't. It isn't what? Any of your business? I <laughs> mean, no offense, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I stuck my neck out for that answer. You see, we're all leery as strangers in these parts because of things that have been going on. Oh, things like what? Well, I suppose you've heard of the recent bank robbery. Yeah, but I'm told that was pulled by a gang of black-bearded hombres. Uh-huh, you were told right. Then why should you be leery of beardless strangers, Jackson? Well, I guess you got something there, Joe. You couldn't be one of that gang unless you shaved off your beard since the robbery. Or took it off. What do you mean by that? Oh, just a thought, that's all. There's no law against an hombre thinking, is there? No. Of course, it can be dangerous sometimes to think out loud. Oh? But what I mean is, sometimes a stranger like yourself is evading the law, and uh, he might think something out loud and find a lawman was listening. I may not be evading the law, if that's what you're hinting at, Jackson. But if I am, no one around here knows about it. Well, Kelly, you have a way of saying nothing by saying something confusing. You don't look confused to me. Hey, look, Joe. Yeah? We've been sparring at each other ever since I sat down. Why can't we just talk right out and say what we mean? I didn't ask you to start talking to me. Uh, why did you? Because you don't look like a drifting cowpoke to me. Frankly, I figure you to be a highwayman there, a gunslinger for hire. From the looks of those guns, the smooth hands you get. You sure observe mighty close, Jackson. Uh, what if I am what you say? Look, uh, yeah. how about coming out to my place, meeting a few friends of mine, and getting better acquainted? Ooh, maybe I'm willing to spare the time. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Suits me. Maybe we'll both find out something worthwhile. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Note to continue. When the Lone Ranger left the cafe with Steve Jackson, Tonto waited a few moments. Then he followed. Steve took the Lone Ranger, who, because of his careful disguise, was without his mask, to the farmhouse where Sadie and the others were waiting. Oh, Sadie, I want you to poise to meet Joe Smith. Brought him out so as we could all get better acquainted. Howdy. 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 Mm, Blackie wasn't exaggerating when he said you were well built, Joe. Blackie must be a mighty fast talker, ma'am. I don't recollect hearing him say anything, but howdy. Uh, Sadie means I saw you coming toward the house with Steve and said that. Oh, I see. You know, ma'am, I recollect a woman in show business by the name of Sadie Jackson. Seems to me she was with a carnival a few years ago. <laughs> that was me, all right, but you wouldn't recognize me now. You see, I was the bearded... Shut up, Sadie. Joe's not interested in your past. Wouldn't mind if he'd show a little interest in my future. I might do some thinking about that. Sure not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, rest of you clear out, all except Flicker. I want to talk with him and Joe Smith. Sit down, Joe. You and Flicker. Thanks. <laughs> Just what do you have on your mind, Jackson? All right, give it to us straight, mister. What's your game? Yeah, speak up. You sure aren't very friendly, inviting me out here and then pulling guns on me. You're not fooling me. What did you mean when you made that remark about taking off the beard when we were talking at the cafe? Oh, reckon like I said then, I was thinking out loud, maybe. I brought you out here so as to find out the truth about why you've been snooping around town. <laughs> No use getting riled up because I asked a few questions, Jackson. You did some asking yourself. What's more, you haven't stopped yet. Oh, Steve, maybe he's all right at that. That's for me to say, Flicker. <coughs> all right, reach Smith and reach high. Yeah. Just as you say. But this here friendly visit is turning out to be mighty uncomfortable for me. I reckon I'm too trusting the strangers. Flicker, go call Blackie. Right. Hey, Blackie. Yeah? Steve wants to come in here. Steve. Well, Flicker and I keep this hombre covered. Go behind him. Take his guns. Sure. I got him. Man alive, what guns? Hey, hey these six shooters are loaded with silver bullets, Steve. Silver bullets? Let me see. Holy mackerel, they are silver. Uh-huh. So that's it. Oh, what do you mean, that's it? Talk sense. Yeah, what do you mean, Steve? Ever hear of an hombre who usually wears a mask, rides a white stallion, and carries silver bullets? Nope. What? What are you driving at? This hombre doesn't have on a mask. Maybe not, but he is riding a white stallion and he's got silver bullets. Boys, I'm sure this coyote is the Lone Ranger. Hey. Yeah? Who's he? I've heard of him. He's a masked hombre who helps the law. Oh, but he don't have a mask on, Blackie. You fool, a mask is easy to take off. <laughs> sure. That's what I meant when I said maybe that outlaw gang took their beards off. Fake ones would come off easy. Hey, he's found out. Found out what, Flicker? Shut up, Flicker. All right, mister. Try to take me away out of this. You said yourself I don't talk much, Steve. I'd be a fool to talk with the shadow of that lone ranger following me everywhere I go. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> I got his horse and guns and his silver bullets, haven't I? I'll bet no one else could get away with having them. Great day, Steve. He must mean he stole them from the lone ranger. That accounts for Joe not wearing a mask. Yeah, I'd like to believe that. Well, believe what you like, Steve. Blackie seems to be the smart hombre around here. Thanks, Joe. I'm the boss around here, Savvy. That's right, he is. And Steve is plenty smart. Maybe this hombre could help us in our business, Steve. Well, if I was sure he was telling the truth about getting the best of that mask, man. If I was that mask, hombre, why would I be going around without my mask? Why, sure, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I reckon Steve can't answer that one. Well, maybe I made a mistake after all. Give him back his gun. Sure. Yeah, they are. Oh, thanks a lot, Blackie. Tell Sadie to come in here. Yeah, I'll call her. Sadie, Steve wants you. Get right in. Hey, Finish your talk with Joe Smith, Steve? Just about. I was wondering about asking him to work with us. Yeah, that's just fine. I'll get the other beard from a trunk. Beard? Sadie, as usual, you spoke out of turn. I haven't said anything about that to him yet. Say, now I'm beginning to see the light. You hombres must be members of that bearded gang. And you do wear a fake beard. All right, all right. Now you know, Smith. That means, of course, that you have to stay with us. Now, Steve, you know we'll be mighty glad to have Joe with us. I know I feel that way. It's right nice of you to say so, Sadie. I 
Didn't expect to find a lady with the game. <laughs> I'm right glad you recognize a lady when you meet one, Joe. These other galoots aren't that discerning. Get that extra beard from your trunk, Sadie. Tonight we'll take Joe with us and hold up the Sandy Rock Cafe. And we'll be sure the law is after him, too. That sure suits me, Steve. Uh-huh. Remember this, Smith. Yeah? I'll be watching you close every minute. And if I don't like what I see, I won't hesitate to gun you, Savvy. Sure, Steve. Hi, Savvy. I'll be mighty careful. I'll mosey on out and put up my horse till we're ready to ride to town. If it's all right with you, Steve. Well, go ahead. Remember this. If you try to ride away, we'll fill you with lead. I'm staying. Don't worry. Well, I'll watch anyway till I see you go into the barn with your horse. <laughs> you don't have to trust me if you don't want to, Steve. But believe me, I'm anxious to stay. Don't worry, Steve. I can tell by that look on his face that Joe means to come right back. Well, he'd better. Hurry up, Joe. I'll have a nice hot cup of coffee ready for you when you come in from the barn. Well, that's mighty nice of you, ma'am. You... You can call me Sadie if you have a mind to, Joe. Well, thanks, Sadie. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. The Lone Ranger left the house and, leading Silver, walked toward the barn. As he approached it, he heard an expected signal. The Lone Ranger entered the barn with Silver. Then he led the white stallion into one of the stalls. All right, big fella, get in there. Tonto yes, eased through the back door of the barn and quickly reached his side. Everything all right, Kimosabe? Better than all right, Tonto. The members of the bearded gang are living in this barn. Let them know you find that out? Yes. <laughs> I've been asked to join. The leader, Steve Jackson, suspected my identity, so I had to do some quick talking. Uh, and what you do next? They uh, call me Joe Smith. Jackson plans to hold up the cafe in town tonight. To have me prove myself. That's not good. <laughs> I'll write a short note, Toto. All right, there. I'll take this note to the sheriff. I suggested a plan for capturing the gang red handed. Ah, uh, me take note to sheriff. Joey! Joey, we're waiting for you! <laughs> Kimasabi, yeah? you not tell me about squaw with gang. Joey! <laughs> Me think it better you captured gang pronto. Or maybe Squaw captured Joe Smith. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't worry about that if you saw her, Tonto. All right, better get going. Uh, me go now. Adios. Adios. That night, the crowd in the cafe was noisier than usual. Yet there seemed to be a tenseness in the air, which was shown by the way all eyes turned to the door every time it opened. Finally, the chatter and laughter stopped suddenly as the side door slammed open to reveal several black-bearded figures. Reach, all of you, reach! Well, what do you know? There's the sheriff standing at the bar. I'd keep every hombre here covered, boys. Now, Smith, you'll be the one to get their cash. Start over there with the sheriff. Just as you say, boss. Remember, be careful, because I'm watching. I'll remember. All set, Sheriff. My men are behind the bar at the windows and at the tables. Hurry up, Smith. Get started. Now, Sheriff, give the word. Cover them, men. <laughs> we get them covered from all sides. Hey, look. Deputy standing behind the bar. All right, cut them down. I'll get the sheriff. Hold it. I put men outside at the windows and the doors. You haven't got a chance. Let's fight our way out of here. Stop, Come men. <laughs> For a while, the outlaws fought furiously as the sheriff's men closed in. In the midst of the fray could be seen the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had quickly entered from the back. You let us into this, so you must be that masked man we thought you were. That's right. That fake beard will stop this. Hey, we got to give up. They got us. All right, men, take it easy. We got them where we want them. Sheriff, I've already removed the beard they gave me. I suggest you remove the beards from the others. Grab off those fake beards, men. All right, Sheriff. Well, Steve Jackson... There's Blackie and Flicker and the others who were supposed to be farmhands. Well, what do you know? You are say sure foolish. Yep, all but my friend here who came in with him. Well, Sadie Jackson, Sheriff, we went and brung her to town like you ordered. Say, what goes on anyhow? That double-crossing oh. Joe Smith. He planned this trap, Sadie. Joey, tell him you didn't. The gang is finished, Miss Jackson. What? You'll be jailed with them. Say, hey, you, you talk different. Joey, how could you do this to me? 
Just when I was getting to like you and all. <laughs> Me think it good squaw go to jail, Kimasa. I <laughs> see what you mean, John. <laughs> The entire idea of the bearded gang was hers, Sheriff. Some of my men are searching the farmhouse. I'll bet they'll turn up plenty of other evidence against all of them. You planned the trap well. Thanks to you. Outlaw gangs must be broken up here in the West if this territory is to grow. Mm, that's right. Pot and I are going back to the mission now, Sheriff. We'll see you again, I'm sure. Give my best to the Padre. And tell him we're sure glad we met you there this morning. We'll give him your regards. Adios. Goodbye. Adios. Oh, Let's go, Toto. Uh-huh. All right, men, get these crooks over to the jail. And take Sadie Jackson along with him. Doggone. Why is it that just when I meet up with an hombre like Joe Smith, who's really a man, he had to turn out to be a double cross? <laughs> Sadie, that hombre could have the pick of any lady in the whole West for marrying if he had a mind to. So why should he pick a big, rough, tough what? female like you? Why, you bow-legged galoot! Joe Smith was polite as all get out to me. How do you know he First was... off, he isn't named Joe Smith. Then again, he usually wears a mask. But this time, he had his face disguised to fool you. What's more, he's always polite to females. But he's just as firm about getting them behind bars as he is with men, when a female happens to be crooked. I still just can't savvy at all. Ah, uh, you're a fool, Sadie. And so am I for letting him talk me into thinking he wasn't the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.